goddamn Japanese games were weird back in the day. And today's game is no exception, and whoever liked it must have really, really liked Mega Man because it plays almost exactly like it. This is Kokoron on the NES. This game is like the love child of Little Nemo the Dream Master and Mega Man. It was released only in Japan, and I've been told that it was released in English as well, but it was an extremely limited release. However, I only have one person's word on that, as I could find no research on it myself. If you're gonna play it by yourself, you either need to learn Japanese, or, if you're American and stupid, hack the ROM with an English translation like I did. When the game starts up, you're introduced to some blue elephant thing in a clown suit that introduces himself as the Dream Wizard, and he says that you can be anything you want in a dream. Granted, you have to be aware that you're in a dream to control it, but I'm looking way too into it. And look at that house. It looks like something John Wayne Gacy would live in. Where this game really shines is the character customization. You get to choose from several different sets of heads, and each set has three heads. Some have more health than others. Then, after you select your head, you get to choose a body, and these also have various health stats. So I went with some Cyborg 009 body with a Gundam head, because that actually gives you the most health. After you choose your head and body, you get to choose your weapon. Just go with the Ninja Stars, they're the best weapon in the game, and I'll explain that in a bit. There's five levels in your house that are on the map, and the last level is hidden. And what the fuck is that on the map? Is that a field of skulls? It is! Whose dream am I in? I know I wouldn't have a dream about a bunch of skulls next to a sea of milk. Whoever's dream this is, I think they have serious matricidal tendencies. Once your character is created, you get to choose where you want to go, and then you're off on your adventure in Dreamland. The levels are littered with various enemies of weirdness, like moles and ceramic flower pots and flying pandas that throw beach balls at you? What? Each time you kill an enemy, they drop an egg, and then you attack the egg to open it. And most of the time they drop health or a weapon upgrade. And this is why you choose the Ninja Star. Not only are they the strongest weapon, but when fully upgraded, you just can't die. Collect enough upgrades and you get a bigger and stronger one. Then you get to fire two, one in the front and one in the back of you, and then finally you get to shoot one upwards. So there's no way enemies can touch you. There's not that much information on this game. There was a sequel made for the TurboGrafx-16, but it was never released. The developer, Tekaru, also made another Mega Man clone that was released in America, but had a limited release. It makes me think that Capcom sued the pants off of them for copying Mega Man so blatantly. After you defeat a boss, you're required to create another character, but you're not required to play it. Why would you? Especially when your already created character is already powerful enough to take over the dream world and establish a new government to rule with an iron fist. One of the things that I kinda like is that after you complete a level, then select another, you have to backtrack through the level you're in to make your way to the one you want to go to. It adds some length to the game, but does get really tiring after a while. So if you're a Metroid fan and love the thrill of backtracking, then you're not gonna mind. After you defeat all the bosses, you're still tasked with saving the princess. So you go to see the king who lives in the castle, and he'll give you a hint where the princess is. And whenever you find the egg, you get to go to the last level. At least, that's what I can assume as I could never find the princess. I searched the area where she's supposedly hidden, and I found nothing, and I've checked all the levels. So who knows where she is. This is where I gave up. So, is it a fun game? Eh, for a while it is, but it's just way too easy, and there's no challenge to it whatsoever. So, giving this one a rating is actually going to be pretty tough. But, let's look at it. There's no programming issues that I've come across. However, it's been done before, and there's nothing special about this one. So, I'm going to have to go with a decent rating on this. Unfortunately, it's just not that impressive of a game.